I saw a headline come across my feed the other day about SpaceX in talks with Australia, and I'm sure you know all about it. So tell us, I mean, you probably more than anyone is excited at the notion of SpaceX getting involved with Australia in any way. Oh crikey guys, SpaceX is in talks to land and recover Starship rocket off Australia's coast. Australia? Australia? I, I can't do the accent. But I did see this headline the other day, and yeah, apparently SpaceX is looking to land and recover the Starship rocket off of the coast of Australia. I thought, who better to reach out to than Marcus House? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a wonderful thing to see because, I mean, there's been talks over the last year or so about um, some political agreements between Australia and the United States in terms of some some space funding and things like that for for better collaboration between the two countries which is a great thing to see the funding wasn't a great deal not you know we, we were talking sort of in the hundreds of millions of, or something like that so it wasn't anything to write home about but the fact is that you know we've got a very good alliance between the countries we already have always have and uh you know it, it's great to see anything in terms of some of those agreements and what what that did this is going back a little way but what that did was it opens up some of the um restrictions uh, so you know there's a lot of very strict itar related stuff regulatory uh hurdles and stuff that that stop space you know rocket technology for obvious reasons you know things can be used as weapons and whatnot so uh, the idea is to relax that so that australia and the united states can collaborate um, more freely and openly and, and and potentially have you know spacex um bring some launch uh, facility down here there's really no reason why not we've got a couple of wonderful locations especially in the Northern Territory or, or North Queensland to, to launch from. We're very close to the equator. Um, we've got lots of ocean around us. You know, it's actually a really great place to launch from. It's always been sad to me that Australia doesn't have any launch industry. You know, we've got we've got a space um, industry in terms of making satellites and, and uh, you know, astronomy equipment, all sorts of stuff like that, but never any launch stuff. Um, and we did, you know, way back at the start of the space race, we did have um uh, we did have united states launching um i think it's like uh, redstone variants and things from australian soil as basically the only the only time we've ever really done it uh, with with the exception of just a few other things so yeah um for me i've always been watching the us you know because that's where all the action is um but this week uh we're starting to see this uh th this information come out essentially about being able to recover starship um starship reentry vehicles and actually uh, bringing them into the port of Western Australia. Now this comes from a Reuters report. This marks a possible first step toward a bigger presence for SpaceX in that area as Australia and the United States are working to strengthen security ties. As many of you watched live, SpaceX's fourth Starship flight ended with a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean hundreds of miles off the coast of Australia. But now SpaceX is looking at the possibility of towing a future Starship vehicle from its splashdown point in the ocean to a port in Australia where SpaceX engineers could inspect it and learn more about how it performed. Time to take the work down under. Dude, I'm so bad at this accent. And this idea could go further to having the ship eventually come back to land. Now let's talk about Flight 5 for a second. On the next Starship flight, which is probably going to be around late August, maybe early September at this point, SpaceX is looking to attempt, at least, to recover Starship's giant super heavy booster. And of course, they'll be using the catch arms, aka the chopsticks or the mechazilla on the launch pad tower at Starbase. Just recently at the X takeover, Elon says that it might take a few more flights for engineers to get comfortable returning the Starship itself to a landing on shore. So that is the next step in rocket reusability, but Elon said that they want to be really confident that the ship's heat shield is robust and will land at the exact right location. He thinks that before they try to bring the ship back to the launch site, they'll probably want to have at least three successful landings of the ship in the ocean. So we know that the last Flight 4, um, uh, the last Flight 4 Starship landed somewhere in the Indian Ocean between, um, you know, between Africa, Australia, I'm not really sure exactly where, but... Um, what we do know is that if they plan to sort of bring down starships in particular in the Indian Ocean quite close to um, the coast of Australia, 
they want to then bring them back into the port. And the question is how? Are they going to try to land on some sort of drone ship, some sort of barge? We haven't seen a lot about this lately. Or are they going to try to softly splash it down and have somebody tow it back into port? And, you know, and then what? You know, this is what we don't have information on. Then what do they want to do? Do they want to just bring it back to a, a port in Western Australia to analyse that? Or do they want to actually have it shipped all the way back to the US, which is obviously a very long trip? So, um Interestingly, also this over the last, uh, I think it was this week, maybe it was the week before, we've had this new draft um, FAA assessment going on around Starbase and the future of the infrastructure there. And there's lots of talk in that about horizontal Starship uh, movement. So being able to lay the Starship and the booster down and transport it long distances. So is this all related? I, I, I suspect it probably is, although they have been talking about uh, horizontal transport for a long time but nothing's ever been done with that you know we 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 had rumors years ago i think it was you know that uh, they would move uh, test development vehicles from um, texas to to florida to test from there you know things all changed but um, the intention i think has always been there to be able to transport them horizontally which presumably means some modifications to the vehicles so that they can support themselves in that laid down um, in that laid, laid down way. So yeah. The Reuters report also points out that a Starship launch from Texas and landing off Australia could further demonstrate point to point delivery. They're still in the early phase of this, but this could be incredibly useful. The main advantage would be the delivery time for rocket based cargo around the world. While traditional aircraft needs roughly 12 to 24 hours, this would take advantage of orbital velocity at 17,000 miles per hour and a hypersonic re-entry through Earth's atmosphere. SpaceX has actually been studying how to use Starship for these deliveries since 2021. They even have a $102 million Pentagon contract, and they're making progress on it. This program will graduate to a more serious prototype effort with the U.S. Space Force next year. The main question I've got in my mind is how they're going to actually get hold of the vehicle. It's like, okay, are they just going to soft splash it down and, and can it remain intact enough to tow it back? I mean, you've got to tow it back. A long distance or maybe they're going to haul it up onto a big ship or something but these are probably parts of the funding that that go into how how this is going to work it, it may be that nobody knows yet just that the intention is there to recover a uh, recover a ship and it seems to be in the early testing phase that we're talking about um and and how to actually bring that bring that back i'm sort of as interested to know to know more about this than every, everybody i imagine yeah. <laughs> I mean, we need some good private companies to, to start up some, some big space companies. That's why I'd love SpaceX to also set up shop here in Australia um, at some point because uh, I don't see, from, from a government funding point of view, we're never going to be, uh, we're never going to have NASA that's got these budgets that we're talking about. Australian government, Australian government funding is is much more limited, and you know you you need every now and then we'll hear of oh you know there's been a grant there's been some funding allocated for so many million or whatever it's like well you know that that launches one Falcon Nine you know even <laughs> it doesn't really give you any great stake in a launch industry it does give a stake in things like satellite development or telescope developments you know things like things like that but uh, uh, you know launch is expensive and uh, we really need private enterprise to to do that if it's going to have any hope i think do you think that this will sort of help birth um more of a space industry in australia yeah well i, I certainly hope so they, they were talking a reasonable amount of funding um i think it was around a billion mark or something from memory um having having australia as another port to launch from eventually you know we know that spacex has popped up gigafactories across the globe at this point um various locations and it would be it, it the future of, of Starship, obviously, is to have many, many, many launches, daily launches, probably from various locations around the world. You know, they've talked for years about point-to-point -point transfer, and although I've always been kind of pretty, um, uh, you know, sceptical about the realities of that, the potential is there for military purposes more than anything. I think probably not so much just for for people traveling from A to B. I just I, I I've never felt that as realistic personally. But for military hardware, being able to send stuff from from you know one side of the world to the other in literally hours if you've got them ready to fly, uh, there's a big benefit in that. And you know you could sort of see strategic military um, locations set up in that way. So um, could Australia end up being one of those? You know we don't know, but um, you know we we would certainly have. Um, 
a lot of good reasons for that to be. So, yeah, uh, exciting stuff. Gilmore Space is in north, uh, northern Queensland and they are trying to get their rocket off the ground, but they're having regulatory issues with our own government as well, I believe, trying to get that ready to go. So, you know, these things happen slowly and, uh, uh, yeah, but it would be really great to sort of see SpaceX setting up shop here at some point in any um, any capacity, even if it's just supporting uh, vehicle return or, or whatever it might be. I imagine that they'll transport Starship vehicles similar to the way um, United Launch Alliance do on barges that with, with the vehicles um, laying down horizontally and being shipped across the world. But uh, yeah, it's a long trip from here. Right. Well, it's interesting because, you know, we criticize sort of regulatory hurdles and red tape here in the States and, you know, FAA this or NASA's slow and over budget. And then you have places like China that probably need some more rules and enforcement. Yeah, yeah. What is how is the you're saying there are some regulatory hurdles and <laughs> some some, you know, a slow process there as well? Yeah, um, I mean, it's all very new for Australia in terms of you know, the, new, the space agencies have been, the space agency here in Australia has been ramping up um, along with new government um, incentives for, for space, to, um, for sort of space related developments and things like that. But this is all fairly new for us now. So I think the regulations are still sort of staying, trying to catch up with with where the world is going and things like that. And, you know, these things take time. Um, and the regulatory regulatory approvals are there for so many reasons, um, obviously most of which is to do with you know, military-related, you know, you, you don't want everybody launching rockets all over the place <laughs> uh, if you can help it. And um, uh, I understand why that is. And even, even though we're super, um, super connected in terms of our militaries and all that sort of stuff, there's, there's still a lot of caution that is um, dealt around these these regulations um you know we've never had a um we've never sort of had a big military outside of of uh you know ships submarines things like that so yeah we we don't really have i mean we've got air forces and things but it's um much much smaller if you don't very very carefully regulate what people can do with rockets especially orbital vehicles you know they can be used for all sorts of nastiness. So yeah, where where China doesn't have enough regulatory uh, hurdles there, and they can just send whatever they want and drop rocket bodies on the on the population below, which it blows my mind that they that they do that. Um, the regulations <laughs> for the FAR, I think, are, I think are very smart. You know, yeah. they're trying to make sure that everything is is done correctly. And SpaceX pushes hard, and they push fast, and they and they push faster than what the what the regulations can sort of keep up with i think i don't think there's any intentional malice there um it's just just the nature of government well yeah i mean no one's ever moved as fast as spacex so you know of course yeah. it's gonna be you know new uh situation um yeah no so so i have a lot of fans from australia but you're telling me that right now there's nowhere in australia that you can see a rocket launch uh, an or not an orbital one. We've been waiting for this Gilmore Space launch for quite some time. It was supposed to go months ago now, and it's still sitting there on the pad. So that's a that's a um, an interesting vehicle. It's but essentially that's the only one. That's the only one. It's the only one being prepared right now. Yeah, um, we haven't had an orbital launch for like decades. I can't even remember that. Um, like we're talking way back in the space race, you know, there was there was some Mercury stuff, but that was done in association with NASA. So, you know, it was actually NASA, uh, NASA rocket tech. Um, it wasn't actually an Australian built rocket. So this is the first Australian built rocket ever to try to to try to become an orbital rocket. And they're trying to get it ready now in North Queensland. So, yeah, that's that's our industry here for that. It's about time. It's overdue. Sure is. Yeah. <laughs> sure is. Um, but yeah, I mean, it would be wonderful um, to be able to jump, hop over to Western Australia and, and you know, film some ships being towed in or something like that. That's, that would be amazing for us to have a little tiny piece of the coverage at some point. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you mean you don't just like covering remotely this place that you've never been yeah. to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, do people ask yeah, you it's... all the time when you're going to go? Sorry. Do people, do your fans like want to know all the time when you're going to be down at Starbase? Oh, yeah. 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 I get that question at least once a week. 
<laughs> the answer is when we get there. Um, it's uh, we were hoping to get there for um, for maybe the first booster catch flight, um, but uh, we're still trying to figure out whether that will actually be IFT five or IFT six. We'll see. So I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this video, and of course, thank you so much to Marcus House for joining and giving us some of your insight. Marcus lives in Tasmania and he has a very big SpaceX news channel. I really appreciate Marcus's help, not only for this interview, but for being a great source of advice and mentorship as I navigate the challenging landscape of YouTube. I do appreciate all of the support for Ellie in Space, and if you'd like to consider taking that support a step further, please check out my Patreon. As many of you know, this is my full-time job, and the YouTube revenue can be very unpredictable. So I really appreciate everyone who is supporting the channel. We've crossed 100K subscribers, and I guess the next milestone is 200K. So thank you so much for helping me get there.